Welcome to To Enable Help. In this video, I'm going to explain to you how to create a new questionnaire. After logging in, you go to the supervisor menu and you select learning areas and you find the learning area that, uh, where you, that you wish to edit. So we'll pick English home language and it will load up English home language and you can see English home language is still fairly, un is, is very much under development. So if I select grade 10, down here you can see each of the modules in grade 10. If I scroll right along here, you'll see it has create questionnaire. Okay, if there was a questionnaire, it would give me an option to edit the questionnaire, but there are no questionnaires created for grade 10 English. So the first thing I have to do is to create the questionnaire. So you select the week for which you wish to create the questionnaire. So if I do week one, and then I select create questionnaire. Just before I press this button, if you are in edit mode, it is, uh, in fact, I'll take you that I'm going to be in edit mode, and I hit create questionnaire, it's going to say, you cannot do this when you're in edit mode. So you need to not be in edit mode up here. So I'm going to go back to grade 10, and I'm going to select week one, which is what we did, and create the questionnaire. So what it does is it opens up a new questionnaire. You'll see there are no questions created here. English home language, parts of speech. Okay, there are absolutely no resources, blank questionnaire. Now we can start to build this questionnaire. So we can either create a new question, and I will create a new question for you, and you've got to give it a question name. And what is a good idea is to actually uh, come up with a standard naming system. So this could be English. Uh, home language, grade 10, um, st step 1 for instance. But you need to create names to questionnaires that may, may are relevant to you that if you want to use them elsewhere you can go and find, find the question. Here you choose the question type. So I'm just going to show you a multiple choice question and it's the same. In fact I'll show you first true or false. It brings up the true or false option. If it's multiple choice, it brings up a, a blank screen here where you've got to actually add the resources. So first we'll type the, the question, uh, which day, uh, okay, it's a fairly irrelevant question. And here we can say uh, the first day, depending on which day we count, Monday's starting, second day. So if it is a Sunday, and to confuse somebody, we can say, click here, third day. So if the week starts with a Monday, we can say that is the correct uh, selection, and these two are incorrect. So we've given it a name, we've called it multiple choice, and we've created the question, and in this question, we can actually add pictures, and we can obviously make we can change the font, we can make it bold, and we can make it bigger. And uh, if you want to, you can insert an image. So these are tools for this for the question space, and these are your answers for a multiple choice. And it's obviously the same for true and, true and false. So what I'm demonstrating to you here applies for multiple choice and for true and false. For the incorrect resource, we actually want to go and find what resource they should revise. So I'm going to go and search for a resource, and of course this, I'm giving you an example, so this is not intended to be a, a perfectly good questionnaire. I'm going to find, uh, maybe we should just find adverbs. You'll see how many question, how many resources come up with adverbs. But this would be presuming that in this resource, for instance, this resource would explain to the, this user what they've done wrong in, answer, in selecting this question. Okay, so you're linking the wrong question to a resource that they need to go and revise. And this is the process. You select, you click on the three dots, you can either go and search for the resource name. So for each, um, you can have a different resource for uh, different selections, or you can have the same resource for the, for the selections. And then you would save the resource, okay, which is you're saving the question. So we now, in fact, save this question, 
And what's best is actually to save and close it. Uh, it's going to probably duplicate that question for me. No, it hasn't. So which day of the week is Monday? So that's how we created a multiple choice question. And there is one multiple choice question here. And you'll notice there is one multiple choice question loaded in terms of questions loaded in this assessment. The next step, once we have loaded all of our questions, is obviously to say how many questions we want delivered in the assessment. But before we do that, I'm just going to select a couple of more questions. I've shown you how to add a new, a multi, a new question. And just for convenience, I'm going to uh, show you how to link an existing uh, resource. Let's go adverb. So I'm looking for all questions that have got the name adverb in it. And as I shown you before, if you select the resource down here, is actually more detail about the question. So I can select that resource, and then I can do the same thing again, and I can select that resource. And you know, obviously I have to go and search for the resource that I'm looking for. And this is why it's important for you to remember the name of the, res the questions you created. So if you want to use them somewhere else, you need to be able to type that name in, or part of the name, and it will find the resource for you. So here you can see we've now added six questions into our questionnaire. It shows you there's six questions and I can say in our test I want to deliver two of these questions. So when I go save, and it's going to say this is going to show you that num two questions are going to be delivered in this assessment. So if somebody does English Home Language Grade 10 Parts of Speech, they're going to get uh, delivered an assessment with two questions in them. They're going to be both, all of them they will both be multiple choice and if I have to repeat this assessment it's unlikely that I'll get the same two questions because the system absolutely randomizes this. The other mistake that I've made here as you can see the mark value for all the questions is zero and it's important that each question is given a mark and the rule that we generally using is the mark value is one mark per minute. Um, that it would take the, the user to complete the question. So you've then got to edit those mark values and you can save it. And it's important to understand also that, as I've said before, this question can appear in multiple questionnaires. And in this questionnaire, it could be worth two marks. And in a different questionnaire, it could be worth four marks. So if you were using a questionnaire across grades, you can do that. And if you're using a questionnaire in the same grade, you can obviously you keep the same mark value as it, one would expect it to take a user in grade 10 the same length of time to answer it regardless of the step. So that explains to you how to create a questionnaire. Now that we have created a questionnaire, we can obviously come back and we can find and edit the questionnaire. And that has been demonstrated before. As you go to the supervisor menu, you can go to questionnaires, you can type the learning area, the grade, and we were in step one. And hopefully it will, uh, let's see if we can find. So, in fact, it was step order. Okay. In this is obviously the learning area, the grade that, uh, and 10 appears in the grade name. English appears in the learning area name. The step is actually the step description and the step order is, is the name of the number of the step. So uh, this was the, the step that we have just edited. So I'm just going to select that and I think it selected both for me, which it did. But um, this was the questionnaire. You can see I've now loaded two questions, but this was a question I loaded. And here are the questions. And again, I can go and edit and add questions to it. So once you've created a questionnaire, you can always go back and edit it. And that is a short explanation as to how to create questionnaires.